Welcome back everyone, Denzel Rodriguez here, Alex Albaran. We're together live discussing our business models, how we generated a million dollars over a period of time, in his case in one year, in my case over like two, three years. And in this video, we're gonna be discussing traffic, how we both generate traffic, similar strategies that we both use, and then strategies that only I use and then only mm -hmm. Alex use. And just really talking about the pros and the cons of those different things to help you make a decision in terms of how you're gonna generate traffic to your offer, right? How you, how you turn traffic into leads to present your offer, make sales, to have your first million dollar year. And let me Seven add one that. point to start. You don't wanna say, you know what? I love YouTube, I'm only gonna do YouTube or I think I'm gonna do affiliates or I'm gonna do paid ads because it's like having a stool with one leg. If that leg gets broken, your business is dead. I personally know people that used to make multiple seven figures that are now broke in their business because they had one traffic source, one essentially revenue source. And so a good friend of mine told me, you wanna have whales, you wanna have minnows, you wanna have squirrels, you wanna have big and little lead sources because one thing right now could be hot. You could be killing YouTube. You could be killing affiliates. In 36 months, maybe the way you used to do things doesn't work anymore. So before we dive into that, I just wanted to mention that specific point in that not one of these is going to be everything you need. Even if you're great at YouTube, you still wanna have some paid ads, have some affiliates, have some word of mouth. Even though everyone has pros and cons, they kind of counterbalance each other to where if your paid ads are going a little slowly, your YouTube might be picking up and it kind of balances out. But I just want to mention that you want to have a bit of diversification with your revenue streams because anything can happen. Absolutely. And I'll just get us started mm -hmm. off here. So I personally did the YouTube. That was my first traffic source that I started mm -hmm. with. And there's different ways to get on YouTube, right? So I'm just gonna share how I got on YouTube. So it started with my own channel. So I started my own channel for free, does not cost any money. Mm -hmm. And on my own channel, I created organic content, which also does not cost money outside of whatever material you use to create the content. Now, most of us have phones. So I literally only had a phone to start mm -hmm. and I stacked a couple of Bibles and books in such a way where the phone would, would hold up. He's serious. And that's, that's all I had to go. I and saw. It, and it was about, <laughs> he saw. And yeah. it was only about maybe a couple of weeks and Alec gave me a microphone, a, a, a very inexpensive directional microphone to just add right to the phone. He gave me that, I didn't pay for that. And then over time, I had those of you watching that know me years from day one, someone in particular actually gave me a whiteboard and gave me lighting and eventually a better microphone and eventually a better camera and eventually a better whiteboard. So uh, you can get funded by your viewers especially if you're putting out valuable content. So it starts with creating organic content that's valuable, educational, transformational, free, you start your own channel. That is where I began. The, the pros is everything I just mentioned, right? The con, the cons to this, it's slow, right? Somewhat unpredictable. Right, unpredictable, no guarantee. There's mm. no guarantee, it's slow, unpredictable, right and requires more time mm -hmm. requires more time and you're definitely going to need high quantity mm -hmm. lots and lots of of content to really generate the traffic that you would need in order to turn a percent of that traffic into leads a percent of that leads into sales to fund your business mm -hmm. Right. So I'll stop on my end. I'll mm -hmm. pass it over to Alex and he can talk about one of the traffic sources that he used to grow his now seven figure business. And you guys notice I wrote this does not look as good as that. The handwriting, let's just say that. But I did use YouTube as well, but I used YouTube in more of a affiliate sense where I would say, look, Denzel, you have 50,000 subscribers. Let me go on your channel. Let me make videos like this. Let me do affiliate marketing, which essentially means, hey, let me set up a link and anytime 
somebody watches that video, they're like, okay, this Alex guy, hmm, I think he could help me market my business. Let me reach out. They would reach out through a link through our video. I would give them a call. If they sign up, I would give him a referral fee for having me on the channel and giving me, again, that traffic. Affiliates is great because, again, it's free. You don't have to spend money to get affiliates, but it's a relationship business. You can't just wake up and say, you know what, I'm gonna, let me, Mr. Beast, let me go be on his channel. It's like, no, you need to know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that has a channel and that's willing to put you on and you have to perform. I mean, you're watching this, if you're still watching this video, it's because we're not boring. If you go on somebody's channel and you're boring and the video doesn't get a lot of views, they're not gonna have you back, right? And so with affiliate marketing, you can do that through YouTube. You can also do it through um, email marketing as well. And so let's say somebody has an email list where they sell their products and you go on their list as an affiliate and say, send an email about my offer to your list. And again, if they sign up, I'll give you a referral fee as an exchange. But again, you can't just magically conjure that up. That's where affiliate marketing, the pro is that it's free essentially no risk, but it's not linear. It takes a lot of time, right? My affiliate side of my business is really picking up and I'm seven years in. That's not attractive to say, but seven years in, now my affiliates are picking up. So again, the con is it takes a lot of time. It's not guaranteed. You don't know if affiliates are gonna have you back on. Maybe an affiliate that used to be big on YouTube is now small, so, Again, it's kind of like YouTube where it's no risk, it's free, but you don't have as much control, it's not guaranteed, and it takes a lot of time not to make a video with Denzel, but to build a relationship to where somebody like him with credibility, with a following, would have me on his channel, just like my other affiliates. And so that's where affiliates come into play. Now paid ads, that's really how I grew my business. I'm running out of space here. Paid advertising, of course, is Facebook advertising, YouTube advertising, TikTok, the pro is that it's extremely, I would say, guaranteed in a sense of people are going to see your ad. Yeah. If you spend a million dollars on ads, they're going to see it. Whether or not they buy, that depends on the skill of the advertiser, right? But you're guaranteed traffic. If we're talking about traffic, you're guaranteed traffic from paid advertising. So I would say that is the pro. Another pro is that it doesn't necessarily take time to scale. For him to scale his YouTube channel, you would need editors, you would need to put out more videos and spend more time making videos. That's, that's not scalable to a certain extent. Um, you can only make so many videos in a day. Even if you really pushed it, you could probably make like four, if that, mm -hmm. right? With advertising, you could spend $1 a day or $1 million a day with the same level of effort in a sense. It's just adding more zeros and then clicking go on your advertising campaign. That's it, it's scalable, it's guaranteed traffic, not sales, but guaranteed traffic. But of course, I would say the cons are, it's not expensive, but it costs money, right? So especially if you're starting a business, you work with me, you work with somebody else, you pay for a website, you know, click funnels, all the software you need, and you're spending money on advertising. That's again, not necessarily guaranteed in terms of sales. You're guaranteed to be spending money but you're not guaranteed to be getting money in return. So that's where, especially if you're new to this, you're probably gonna spend thousands of dollars and make nothing back. So that is the con of paid advertising. And of course, it is a bit outside of your control because maybe Facebook shuts you down, YouTube advertising gives you issues, whatever it may be. Whereas with this, it's more, you're putting videos out, they can't really cancel you. I mean, they're not gonna cancel Denzel or I for making videos, but maybe they thought your ad said something that it shouldn't have or something like that. Somebody reports it and now your paid ads are shut down. And again, if that's your only revenue stream, your business could die just by Facebook changing a policy or one little thing wrong with one ad can mess up your entire business. So um, that's where, again, none of these are better than the other. They all have pros and cons, but I'd like for you to touch on to wrap up word of mouth because that's how most business owners get their traffic is they love word of mouth yeah. and tell them why. And word of mouth can be used on, on both ends as a result of any one of these traffic sources. Mm -hmm. So in my case, as I started creating my own 
YouTube channel, putting the content out there, providing valuable content to people, and then converting those subscribers into leads, those leads into paying clients, aka you that are watching. I then, over time, ask you if you know anyone that would get value from the program that you just went through. So there's a process of asking so that you can receive that's a, a principle there. And then through word of mouth on YouTube, consider collaboration. So I would offer my YouTube channel as a means of collaborating with someone else that maybe just started their YouTube channel. Case in point, I will use a YouTube channel that some of you will probably know. His name is Steven Gardner, and that's the name of his YouTube channel. He had reached out to me when he had around 400 subscribers. This is a good example of why you should never underestimate any content creator. If there's a fellow content creator out there that's willing to collaborate with you on content to provide valuable education, transfer people's lives, strongly consider it. Do your, do your due diligence. Make sure that their audience is in alignment with yours and their values and principles are in alignment with yours. In this case, Stephen Gardner, was a gentleman, a man of God, man of faith, married man. He was an example of the type of man I wanna be when I get older. Father, husband, content creator, giver. Great, we only have 400 subscribers. At the time, I had multiple thousand subscribers. So we collaborated and I got access to his 400 subscribers. Now you might be thinking, well, Denzel, that's an odd, you know, adverse, you know. Relationship. Uh, uh, yeah, like mm -hmm. a payoff. Well, because I was more concerned about who his audience was and who we would be serving and his offer to me was simply free, right? Take a couple hours, an hour or two, and let's discuss topics that we both agree on that we come at different angles or at the same angle, and now we're giving more value. And guess what? This man now grew over 1.1 million subscribers. Now he's almost at 1.4. And I'm still, mm -hmm. I'm rocking at 50,000, maybe 52,000 subscribers, and he's just blowing up. So now this is a gentleman that over the years, I connected this gentleman to Alex. They started doing business. So now I'm in, I stay in good terms, good reputation, good credibility with this gentleman. If there's an opportunity that may present itself one day where he comes to me and said, Denzel, let's do another collaboration. Now he's got 1.1 million subscribers and I got the 50. Now there's a, what, an imbalance again. Another example, there's a YouTube channel called Wealth Nation, okay? But Denzel, would you say this is more, I'm talking in terms of traffic, I guess it is a combo of affiliates and word of mouth. Yeah. It's kind of a combination, right? Well, the good part is you don't need to set up an affiliate relationship with True. a content creator you collaborate with. You're not trying to go on their channel to make money. Exactly. You're just trying to go promote your brand. We're, we're solving for traffic and the word of mouth is coming from that creator, from his or her word saying, hey, you should go check out Denzel's material, right? right? So word of mouth looks like collaboration. It looks like webinars right where you can do like a private webinar with that creator or you could even do some kind of a, a workshop speaking right so all, all of these different things come by word of mouth it, right. he wouldn't have never offered it had he not heard about me somehow mm -hmm. some way in his case it was the organic content mm -hmm. and so word of mouth what most people think of very simply is just someone that you know that you serve them well and then now they're giving you a Google review or a Yelp review or they're telling their friends and family about you and you give them the tools to say, hey, bring them to my YouTube channel, here's my phone number, here's my email, that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. I kind of took word of mouth to a whole new level in terms of like- The scalability. Imagine, yeah, the scalability. Because you're reaching now, I mean, with Steven, millions of views potentially. Exactly. Right. Imagine getting a word of mouth from a creator that has way more of an audience than mm. you do. Not to belittle any of my clients that don't have a following, but they can only do so much with, right. with who they have. And, and that's still extremely valuable because you're talking warm lead, warm traffic. Warm, essentially traffic. free lead. Exactly. So that's again, going back to the, I would say the downside is that with word of mouth, most businesses don't have any of this. 
They don't have any other way of getting business. They're like, you know what? I'm the best realtor in whatever, Hollywood, Florida, Miami, Florida. The I'm the best lawyer. Like mm-hmm. people should be reaching out to me. I'm the best and mm-hmm. that's fine to a certain extent, but he mentioned the pros, the cons, it is not guaranteed. You have no way of controlling. Am I getting referrals? Am I not? You have no control essentially over your revenue. Because again, maybe in our last video, if you watched that, you noticed there's traffic, there's leads, and then there's sales. But if you don't have control over the traffic, that's the bottleneck in the system. You have no way of predicting how many leads am I getting and how many sales am I getting. So a con could also be bad traffic. Right, like maybe word of mouth from the wrong person who they want to buy a $2 million mansion, but they have you know 500 bucks. Yeah. And you're like, okay, well, what am I supposed to do with this? You know? Exactly. And so you don't have control over the type of lead being brought to you because you're in this stage of a business, if you're just word of mouth, I would say you're more in the survival mode because every lead that you get, you feel like you have to close. Every business owner is watching this and understands that mindset where if you haven't gotten any qualified lead in three weeks, you get one today, you're gonna try to hound them to get them to sign up and nobody wants to buy from somebody that's desperate. Nobody wants to make, especially a significant purchase, you want somebody that's not like backing away, but somebody that's like, hey, if it's a great fit, let's move forward, let's make it a win-win. But again, if you're relying on word of mouth, you have no guaranteed traffic, you have no control over the traffic, which means again, any lead that you get, even if they're not qualified, you're gonna try to close them out of a state of survival scarcity and desperation and that's where if you control your traffic if you have youtube paid ads and you have paid ads on youtube instagram TikTok, facebook you have 20 affiliates and you have word of mouth that's where you can be not just selective over the leads you get but you're also going to have more revenue and you're going to have more diversification because maybe your channel starts to die it's okay now i have 25 affiliates or my paid ads i'm spending more so i'm getting more So that's where you want everything. Think of it like a meal. You don't just want the appetizer. You don't just want the entree. You don't just want the dessert or the drinks. It's everything. That's, I would say, a stable foundation for a successful business. Absolutely. And just to wrap things up, to the the meal analogy, you don't have your appetizer, your salad, your entree all at the same time Mm -hmm. either. So a great way to close things out here is to really decide on maybe one thing that Mm -hmm. you want to go in on. And over time, as your YouTube, let's say you went the YouTube route, as that begins to grow and your cup fills up, starts to flow, you can pour into the next thing so that now you're diversifying and you're building protection Mm -hmm. with your your traffic and also controlling it overall. So with that being said, have a wonderful day. God bless and we'll be talking soon.